Today, we're looking at a purple ink by Jeherban, Larms de Cassis. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. There's timestamps down below so that you can skip around, but if you got the time, I would appreciate if you check out the entire video. Also, if you're interested, you can check me out over on Instagram. And if you're new here and like fountain pen inks, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this Sailor My First Pen with a medium fine nib. I used it to write for a day and then used it to take the notes for this video. In order to have some standardization, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper in the first writing samples, although there is an additional writing sample with different papers later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it came in a vial like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does have spots of darker in the letters, so spots of shading. The extra fine is a little bit, just, well, just a hair lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, better spots of shading than we got in the stub. Better peppering, four seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, the shading is about what we get with the extra fine, a little bit more pronounced with six seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show good color variation, and we do get it in the writing. Tomoe River, with no bleeding, minor Tomoe River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. You do see color variation. It's not like it's tremendous, but it is there. You look at the E and duh, you look at the N and Urban. There, it is possible. We just don't get a lot. The extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, a couple spots of a little bit darker, and that's about it. It's not like it's a big deal. It's barely noticeable, but it means that it could be more possible eight seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, the shading that shows itself as just barely being possible in the extra fine, in the medium, is standing out some in a very nice way. It's much easier to see here that there is shading, like the K, the X, the T, the, the one, so it's very possible, much more noticeable here, 15 seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine shows us no color variation, and we only got the hint that it's possible. Medium shows good color variation, we do get it in the medium. How about Rhodia? With no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading throughout, darker spots in the writing, four seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, more spots of shading than we get with the extra fine, nine seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows good color variation, and that's what we get in the writing. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very nice kind of light purple push its way up. We then get it more gathered at a certain point. But what's interesting is right across the very top, there seems to be hints of a darker purple. When you look at just again, the very top line, that what's gathered is quite a bit different than what we saw progressing up. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And essentially there's no real difference between the two. Yes, there is a little bit more of the line at the bottom, but you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them had I not marked the filter paper. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it, it becomes very washed out when you re-highlight, which makes me not feel good using it in a note-taking situation. Although it's readable, it's just becoming washed out. 
Now water is removing a bunch of it, but that purple that was staying on the bottom of the second filter paper is still very much staying in place there. Pen flush, you gotta kind of ignore that orange, which was a transfer from the paper towel with me being sloppy. Pen flush is completely reactivating, breaking this ink down and removing it from the paper. Now, I didn't have to use more than water to get this out of my pen, but if you did, pen flush is all that you would wind up needing. One third bleach solution is completely removing it from the paper, although there's no need for you to use that to get this out of your pen. For the inks I tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Now I'm gonna link the video that shows how I do my testing and calculations. Jay Herban, L'Arme de Cassie, has a viscosity of 1.7, making this a wet ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Jay Herban's L'Arme de Cassie has an average dry time of 8 seconds, making this a very fast drying ink. Instead of finding inks that look like Jay Herban's L'Arme de Cassie, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went for a nice green and chose Robert Oster's Green Olive. The second writing sample is done on North Books, Field Notes, and Fabriano paper. Here we're looking at North Books paper. Now this isn't a paper known for its fondness of fountain pen ink, but I like finding inks that work well, and this has no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, it has spots that are a little bit darker that come through showing hints of shading. The extra fine is just a hair darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, still spots of shading going on showing us that this can shade even here and it only took a second to dry. Medium is a hair darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, a few better spots of shading showing some more darker letters, still only one second to dry. The scrubby for both do show some color variation in far left to far right, and we get that in the writing. Field notes paper, with no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, the extra fine is a little bit darker than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading, spots that are a bit darker, very nice, one second to dry. Medium is a hair darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, much better spotting in the shading here, much better than even in the extra fine, two seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show plenty of color variation and we get it in the writing. And Fabriano. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is just a hair darker than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading, spots that are a little bit darker than the letters around it, but not a whole lot of shading otherwise. Three seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, still spots of shading throughout, a few more, a little bit more than what we get with the extra fine. It shows nicer in the medium. Seven seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine shows almost no color variation left to right, and we only see minor spots. The medium shows it a little bit more left to right, and it shows a little bit more left to right in the writing. And that is all that I have for writing samples. So what do I think of Jeherban's Larmes de Cassis? There is a little bit of a magenta lean in this, and there is some decent shading that goes down on the page. It's a very interesting color to look at that I enjoy being able to read. It's a very fun ink to use. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? While a wet pen is certainly going to put down a much darker tone, I found a medium flow, medium pen really put down a nice tone with some decent shading that I enjoyed quite a bit. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm going to remind you if you enjoyed it, subscribe. Thanks for watching.